Hello. Today we begin our second video installment of the nature and history of our wonderful organ. This video, like the last one and all future videos, will be available through our website and on YouTube. Last time, Dean, you basically described our organ as a tracker action pipe organ. We talked a lot about the wind system, the tracker action. The most obvious description of our organ is that it's a pipe organ. How many pipes are there? That's a question we get asked an awful lot, and I'm going to be a little bit mean. I'm going to make you try to do some math and try to figure it out. And I'll answer that question maybe not even today. I'll maybe answer it in the next segment. But let's, let's start with that math. First of all, we have two keyboards, each of them at 56 keys, and a pedal board at 30 keys. Compared to a piano, this seems rather small. You know, that was noted when, when we were first moving this organ uh, in, and they saw the keyboard coming in, they said, that's all that there is for keys? But you've got to remember that the piano, like we have down in front, that has been standardized at 88 keys since about 1870. Now, the organ predates the piano, obviously, but it also gives us some options that the piano doesn't have, and we'll talk about them today. Why we probably don't need to have 88 keys on here, and why five octave span is about all that we really need to cover all the literature. So getting back to our two keyboards, each keyboard would be able to control a pipe for every single key. So as I have on the eight foot principle now, and I use that with the keys. Every key I press has a pipe that corresponds to it. So when I play this lowest pipe, this eight foot pipe, that's actually this pipe up above. All right. Now, if I jump ahead an octave to this one, that's this pipe right here. And that happens to be four feet long. So in other words, every time I go up an octave, the pipes get halved in length. So if I go up another octave, that pipe is located way over here, and that would be only two feet long. So now, Pastor, if you wouldn't mind, let's play the math. So this is a two-foot pipe, and if I go up another octave, how long would this C pipe be? That would make that pipe one foot long. Correct. Now, if I go up to the fifth octave, how long would this pipe be? Only six inches long. Yeah. Now, those pipes are not up in front anymore. Those have moved to the back of the case. Again, this case is designed to be both visual and functional. So most of our pipes, obviously, are behind inside where you can't see them. I'm still not seeing a great difference between a piano and our own organ. Well, at this point, we've only talked about the fundamental pitch. I'm using a musical terminology there by fundamental. If you think about our congregation, Pastor, when you and I sing, we sing at the fundamental or the eight-foot pitch level, and typically the ladies would sing at an octave higher than us. Well, the organ can do that at the same time. I can add in the ladies' voices, as it were. So now let, let's just play the same game now as we did before. I chose the four-foot pipe now. So this pipe at this level would only be four feet long. This one would be two feet, one foot, six inches, and then three inches. So Dean, the longest pipe that we have in our word is eight foot. What is the shortest pipe? All right, well, already I showed you that by going to the four foot octave, that changed us by half. We actually have a two foot principal pipe that's inside this case. And let's just do the math here. So we start out at two feet long, one foot, six inches, three inches, and that would be one and a half inches. Now that is still not the shortest pipe in our organ. We have some that are even smaller than that. Dean, it just occurred to me, there's really no way to make any of these pipes louder. That is correct. Um, that again is a difference between the piano and the organ. On the piano, if you want to make something louder, you hit it harder, you hit the strings harder. On here, it doesn't matter how hard I hit the, the pipe is only going to be so loud. If I add more 
pipes to speak. Just like we talked about having the ladies of the congregation joining in, their voices are an octave above ours. I can do that same thing now with the pipe organ. So that, that actually does two things. It adds another set of pipes to speak at the very same time, but it also strengthens the fundamental by adding its harmonic structure above. This next one that I'm going to draw on is called the mixture. And it has a Roman numeral three and a Roman numeral four. Depending upon where we are on the keyboard, it will add in three ranks of pipes or four ranks of pipes to continue to build on that harmonic structure. Now listen to that same hymn. So while the eight foot pipe didn't get any louder by adding on these structures, it does give the appearance to us that the organ is now louder. So Dean, getting back to where we first started, how many pipes are there? All right. Here again, I said I would probably tease you with this and let you try to do some math. So if you take a look at the stop list that we have on the organ, and I'll give you a hint. This is not really a stop, and nor is this one. It is an effect that changes the sound of the stops. So if you look at the number of buttons we have, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We've got 17 different button stops. We've got two keyboards of 56 keys each and a pedal board of 30 keys. Anyone want to do the math? We'll see you next time. <laughs>